This is Kathleen from Sunny Mountain Patterns and how to digitize paper patterns on Inkscape. This is a picture that I took with my digital camera. I had it leveled and I have a ruler so I know what scale I have. I tried to make the pieces uh, parallel to the ruler and the ruler parallel to the viewfinder for the camera. Start importing. If you want to get rid of this, which you probably do, <laughs> you want to go to file, which is up here. And um, I'm going to have to splice in what it looks like, but you go to document properties and then you click on the show page border. I'm going to splice this in. And then when you click out of it, it's gone. So now we're going to import the picture you took, which you go file and import, which you can only see on my mouse moving. I'll splice this in. And then you select the file that you wanted to import. And then you press OK in the window that's popping up. Don't worry about everything else. Whoop, that is humongous. Okay, so we're going to zoom out. Uh, you can go down here and click the zoom. This is huge. Oh, that way too much. Or you can press control. Um, or I think it's command in Mac and use the scroll button of the scroll wheel on your mouse. So here I have it clear. It's level. These are lined up. You're going to have to do this for each PC. You take a picture because they're going to be, you probably will have to move your camera in and out. Let's scale this. I just drew a square by drawing this square and then we're going to, I'm going to change it in inches because I'm American. So I want a, a one inch or a two inch square. You know what? I'm going to forget it's two inches. <laughs> Let's go with one inch. Here's a one by one, which I'm going to definitely move. Okay, let me not. You have to highlight it and move it over. This is the same concept if you're going to do this in Illustrator. So you can see here, this is clearly way, way, way too big. Uh, so we can go ahead and do a very fast um, readjustment. So I'm going to lock this. That will lock the ratio so that it doesn't distort. You don't want to distort it. Let's just try to do a 15 inch width and see how that does, how that works. I'm scrolling out and then, oop, my bad. Now I gotta find, find it, okay. I'm actually gonna move this up so it's a little bit more towards the center. And then I'm gonna move this guy down. So we're scrolling in, you can see that is much close. Oop, my bad, Control Z for undoing. So you can see, oh my gosh, <laughs> that by the way was incredibly lucky. I just guessed. We can fine tune this. You might want to change the thickness of this uh, line so you can actually go to for object, fill in a stroke. You can't see what I'm doing, of course, because I have a terrible screen recorder and I need to find that. I don't think this is going to show up either. Basically, you want to do fill in stroke and then change the stroke style, which is all the way on the right, and decrease the thickness. So you'll see here it's decreasing, or you can type it in. Oh, that's too thin to see. Make it thick enough you can see, but not thick enough that it's going to distort. So you can see here, I need to modify this a little bit by shrinking it down. So what I'm going to do is hold the corner and notice here, it'll shrink uh, to scale if you grab the corner. This is not the case if you have Illustrator. Uh, so I'm going to move this back over and see how close it is. A little bit more. This is very close to the same idea of when you're calibrating. Um, it's just, instead of doing it physically, we're doing it digitally. Pretty happy with that. So we're gonna go ahead and stick with that and be like, yeah, we're done. Here's where the magic happens. You want to get the Bezier pen, which is this. It, and you start tracing. So it's pretty simple to just do this. If you want it to be completely straight, hold down the control button. If you're on Illustrator, you hold down the uh, shift button, control or command, sorry. Uh, and you press here. You can also do a little bit of curving by clicking and holding and then dragging while you're holding the left uh, mouse button. If not, this is my other uh, trick is you just click generally around here and then finish this out. If you don't want to do the hold and click or if you're using something that doesn't, you're not super happy with using the mouse. So I'll show you the other way as well. And then when it highlights red, you know you've completed the whole thing. So when you do this technique, oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> when you do this technique, you notice it's um, kind of rough. So you have to change the style of the points to be a curve. So you can see here where this mode up here is, oh, sorry, no bad. That, ignore that. Pretend I didn't say that. Um, I'm actually going to change the view to be 
outline only, so I don't see the drawing. But you can see how rough this is. If you want to change that, you can click this button here or double click and it'll change over to the points or because uh, you need all of this thrown at you at once, you can press F2, which automatically changes it over to changing the points. And then you can uh, just click and drag and click and drag to highlight all the points you need. And then up here, you'll see different options. Hopefully it's up here. I don't know how yours is set up, but look for this what this looks like here. You want to make these smooth. I have never notice a difference between this one, this one, and this one. The corner one is the one you've got on right now. So you want to make this smooth and look how smooth that is. Now, that being said, this may not be the correct um, pathway for the pattern, which you need to be careful, especially for things like armholes when you have sleeves, because then the sleeves might not match perfectly with armholes, especially if you have something that's fitted rather than something that you need to you need to gather or you need to um, pull in. So let's uh, change the display mode. I press view and then display mode, which you cannot see, <laughs> and change it back to normal. So you can see here, this is actually a little bit bigger than what I have here. Now, depending on how, how accurate you need this to be, so if it's a tight fitting garment or a close fitting garment, it's gotta be very accurate. A quarter inch or a half an inch, uh, an eighth of an inch, maybe might make a difference. Maybe not. It just depends on the pattern. The other way of doing this, so this is method. Oh, sorry. What I did was I pressed vertical and it changed everybody's, uh, there we go. I pressed V, which changes it vertically flips it. That's a shortcut key. Oh, my child just woke up. So if you hear stomping, it's him. The other way of doing this, it, again, is to get the Bezier pen. This is method number two, click and click, and then click at this corner and then click and drag until this matches, which might be a problem or hard to match there. Okay. So you don't want this extra thing. I just press enter and then I, I just click on here until it turns red and click and then scroll up and over and that's my child this one's going to be a little difficult because it's got the s curve so i would actually recommend finishing out i'm pointing at the screen you can't see that finishing out this curve first and then going and closing it and clicking and dragging Ooh, if you're not happy with that way just control z it'll undo all oh it hates me it'll undo all of that and you have to redo it so sad um, my experience, you probably want three points here for the inflection. So point one here for this inflection, point two here for this inflection. I am pointing at the screen and you can't see anything. Well, I'm so silly. And then point four to finish it out to be a little bit more flat. Okay. So what happens, I'm going to go ahead and change the view again. No, I hope you can see this. So what happens is, uh, what if you finished this all out and you're like, oh my God, that's not what I wanted. I don't want this curve to be like this. I want this to match exactly. Well, that's where uh, this button here, the edit pass by nodes or F2 comes into play or double click. If you click on the node, you can see these little handlebars. In Illustrator is a way to turn it off, but you just play around with this until it's flat, until this is a matching up the way you like it. And you might have to play around with a little bit more. So in this case, they are evenly spaced. If you want a, if you need a curve, but a perfect corner, there is a shortcut way to do it. Problem is I don't know how to do it. <laughs> so say you want this guy to be curved. So say you want this side to be curved, but this side to be straight. You can make it a curve and then make this side, bottom side, by shortening it up until it touches or snaps to um, that. I'm gonna undo that. Okay, my child's playing with a toy now. Aha, this did not actually connect. Okay. So in this case, when it's not an enclosed piece, which you won't really have a problem, join. It's up here. Illustrator, there's a right, you right click and you would say connect, um, it, but Inkscape is the free version. So you do that for every single one of these. Now, if you wanted to do different sizes and layers, like you can go ahead, layers is that top, you can add a layer or shift control N, which you can't see because Again, my skin quarter sucks. So we're adding layer. I'm gonna name it, uh, say it's newborn. And so right now, layer one is visible. You can of course go to layers and do uh, show or hide current layer. 
So perhaps, oh, or you can click this little button here, toggles. So newborn, I might want a different pattern piece here. Let's pretend that's a pattern piece. Um, and then of course you can change the color. I am totally giving away all of our secrets. It is a lot of work though. So <laughs> the lens stroke, which you can't see because lovely. Um, if you want to change the color, you can also press shift for the line and that will do it. If you just press, if you have this, hello, if you have this highlighted and you just press the colors down here, it'll change the inside, the fill, but not the stroke. So you have to press shift and select the color. So this is how you get the layers and you um, view it. You can see that there's two different patterns here, right? And that's how you trace it. Uh, of course, make sure you respect the designer's intellectual property as a designer. There is a lot of work that goes into this. I mean, I spend hours doing a single pattern. So hopefully you appreciate the difficulties that come with this. So once you want, you're ready for this to be a projector, uh, because you want to be able to use it on projectors, go ahead and change the stroke the stroke style to be thicker and a, a darker color, of course, as normal. And then you can check out my other videos on how to the crash course on Inkscape. Good luck.